Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bunny Cakes and if you're new here, welcome for the first time. So today I am going to be doing the Schitt's Creek book tag. This is a TV series that um, I've recently just started and I got into it um, as the series is ending, as I tend to do sometimes. Um, but because I've been enjoying the series and I have seen some other people talking about the series recently, um, I got into it and I found this book tag and I decided that I'm going to go ahead and do it and tag some people um, that I think will also enjoy the tag. So the first prompt is Johnny Rose, an uplifting book with a good message. So... The one I picked for this is You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. It's a, a self-improvement book that I read earlier in the year, and it's got a really good uplifting message. And even if you're not totally into self-improvement books or self-help books or whatever you want to call them, I think most people would enjoy this. I listened to it as an audiobook, and um, I really, really enjoyed it while I was listening to it between the gym and shopping. Okay, the second book is Moira Rose, an overtop character that you can't help but love. Um, for me, that's always going to be Lestat from Anne Rice's Vampire Chronicles. Um, he is an over-the-top, bratty, <laughs> crazy type character, but he's always been my favorite character of the series and one of my favorite characters of all books. Number three is David Rose. A book that represents your aesthetic. For me, that's going to be the Necronomicon. Surprise. Goth. Happens. <laughs> okay. Um, number four is Alex Alexis Rose. Best character growth or arc. For me, in recent history, I think that title would have to go to Bill Hodges from the Mr. Mercedes series. I loved his character arc and growth. He goes from this worn down, retired detective who could very well be on the cusp of becoming suicidal to this character who has friends and family and hope and a new career and a new life purpose. And I really, really love that character growth and the arc for him. Um, number five is Stevie Budd, a book with a favorite ride or die friendship or group. For this, I chose the characters from the Magician series. Now, I read the books, re the first book recently, and I didn't super love the book, mostly because of the way Quentin is, but both in the books, well, in the first book and in the TV show, the characters, the core group, they are very ride or die for the most part. And they do both ride and die in the first part of the series. Um, and I really love the connections that some of the characters other than Quentin have with one another. Um, so the number six is Ted Mullins, favorite book with an animal on the cover. So I've talked about this book a lot. I haven't reread it yet, but I'm going to. Um, this, what I chose for this is Flowers for Algernon. One of my favorite books of all time. It's always got a little mouse on the cover because that's the main character. Well, one of the two main characters. Um, number seven is uh, Patrick Brewer, The Ideal Love Interest. And I thought of this one probably because of the new prequel coming out. But for me, for what I picked was PETA from the Hunger Games series. Even though he ends up getting programmed and goes through a whole bunch of stuff, I think that he is a really ideal character. He expected nothing of Katniss except for love in return. He loved her, and it was unconditional and so hopeful. And even after he got reprogrammed and he knew that she probably didn't really love him, he stayed with her, and he loved her to the end. Um... So, number eight is Community Service, a book you read for school, buddy read, or readathon challenge that you had low expectations for but ended up being amazing. For me, this was Beowulf. I read it in high school, and um, 
partly because it was one of those books you read in school and partly because it's like ancient i didn't really have high hopes for it but i remember reading the excerpts of this in school and then going and finding the book at the library so that i could actually read the whole story and i really really liked that that story as a whole and also there's a pretty good movie um Number nine is Ooh David, <laughs> a book you DNF'd because the content was too much for you. Um, this I don't really have an answer for. I do have a story that goes behind that though. I don't typically DNF books. Like it takes a whole lot for me to DNF a book on purpose. Now I have lost books in the middle of reading them. I'm thinking of Grapes of Wrath that I need to finish at some point because I finally found the book again. Um, but to actually DNF a book, I, I almost never do. Like, I came really close recently with Heart of Darkness just because I couldn't absorb the story right now. Um, but this is a funny story and it's probably going to age me a little bit. When I was a kid, there was a TV show called Are You Afraid of the Dark? It kind of made a comeback recently on uh, Nickelodeon. But there was an episode where this girl comes over to babysit this boy and he's a really really bratty kid and she can't make him do anything but she brings a bunch of books to entertain him and so he kind of goes along with it and he starts reading books and he never finishes the books he'll like get a couple pages in and then he tosses it and get a couple pages in and toss it well what happens is that when he goes to bed the monsters from the scary stories he was reading come and attack him and he has to finish the books to defeat them. Um, so since I watched that episode, um, I was never really afraid of Are You Afraid of the Dark? But that, I think because I was a reader from such a young age, really got to me. And so I have that in my head now. If I start a book, I finish a book. Because I'm not letting the monster come and get me. I read some really scary stuff. And I don't have the makings to be a final girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I typically just don't DNF books so number 10 is love that journey for me best series ender or overall series progression um, for me I chose the Dark Tower series even though I haven't finished that yet but um, as far as I've gotten, and I've gotten it about halfway, and also I've taken some diversions to read some side content, um, it has, it, it stands out to me because I didn't really have any interest in reading it at first because it's got a Western theme and I don't really get into Westerns at all. Um, but despite that, it has pulled me in. I love the characters. I'm constantly look for, looking forward to the next step in the series, even though for whatever reason I cannot seem to finish uh, The Wolves of the Kala because I've checked that book out like 19 different times, both in physical copies and e-copies, and I just never, ever finish it. I'm going to get there eventually. Um, it, it's a very, very large book, and... I always have like a billion smaller books. I'm like, just let me read this real quick. Uh, but I do love the series. Um, number 11 is Eat Glass, a book series or author you broke up with. So when I very first came across this prompt, I thought of a whole bunch of authors that I don't like. But um, because it says you broke up with, for me, that means an author that you had a relationship with at some point, like a reading relationship with, and then you stopped reading them. And I can't really think of anyone that truly fits that bill, but I do have an author that I have an on-again, off-again relationship with, and that's James Patterson. For the most part, I don't like his books, but he has a series uh, for called Maximum Ride. I really like that series. Um, my fiance's grandma, um, or one of his aunts, I can't remember for sure, one Christmas they got me a book that was part of 
the Maximum Ride series, and I didn't realize until after I started reading it that it was like book two or three. And I really liked that book, and I liked the character development. And recently, oddly enough, um, just this past Saturday, I came across the first book in the series at Walmart on sale for $3, so I bought it. So I'm going to start that series from the beginning this time. So most of the time, I don't like him. I read him a lot when I was younger um, because... Uh, James Patterson novels are really easy to come by, um, but I, I don't like his formulaic writing most of the time, so I kind of break up with him, and then like I'll come back to the Maximum Ride series, or there's a couple of other books of his that I'll come back to sometimes and read. Um, and then number 12 is a very uninterested in that opinion, um, a popular opinion you disagree with. Um, hmm... You know, I can't think of any popular opinions at the moment that I super duper disagree with. So I'll just pop in an opinion I have and we'll see if you guys agree with it or not. So recently in one of the book groups that I'm taking part in, um, there was a, a discussion about TBRs and what those mean for people. And a lot of people, um, I've seen say they don't like TBRs because they feel like a TBR makes it an assignment and an obligation. And in my personal opinion, um, I don't feel that way anymore. I used to, but in my personal opinion now, I feel like a TBR is effectively a reading wish list. These are books that I really want to read for this time period, but they are extremely subject to change. And for me, like I had a TBR for this month that was really ambitious. It has already changed like 300 times. And some of that's based on like my ebook library holds coming up so that I'm checking out new books. I'm like, well, I have my physical books forever, but I only have access to this book that I would really like to read for a certain period of time. So I bump the physical book for the um, ebook, unless it's a physical book that I really, really want to read. Or sometimes I'll do the opposite. I'll go, I want to read this book, but I'll check it out another time because I really, really want to read this physical book that I have or this other ebook that I have access to. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. A TBR should never be an assignment. It should only be a guided and ever-changing wish list. <laughs> um, so that is the last prompt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tag two YouTubers, one that I've talked to about it and one I'm surprising. Um, so the first one that I'm going to tag is the one I've talked to about it. I'm going to tag Witch Kitten Reads. Um, to do this tag because she said she was interested in it and the other person I'm going to tag because I know he just finished this series is Peter Mon. I'm I'm tagging him because I know he really really adored the series and he's actually one of the people that got me into the idea of wanting to watch it so I'm tagging him because I want to see how he does with this challenge and the same for Witch Kitten Reads. I'm interested to see, well, not challenge, book tag, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I want to see how they do with this tag and anyone else who's watching, regardless of whether or not I said your name, if you've watched it and you've not done this tag, by all means, consider yourself tagged too. And I will link both Peter and Witch Kitten's channels down below. Um, as well as the original uh, person who made this tag, which is Pages and Pens. I'll link her original video down below along with the prompts for the, uh, for the tag. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you have a wonderful day, and bye-bye. Um,